good afternoon, good evening, good whenever you're you're watching this. Um, it is day three of the apocalypse, and if you're watching this, you have survived so far the coronavirus apocalypse. Um, but good, it's it's good to, to to be seen. Obviously, I can't see anyone um, through this camera, but it's good to be seen if you're together in a group. I hope you're you guys are safe and enjoying the fellowship together. Um, if it's just you and and your family, I hope you're you're doing the same and, and getting along getting along well. Um, if you're anything like me, uh, you're, you're already wondering when this will be over. Um, I'm a little, you're a little bit over of the over the the time off work, the time being cooped up in the the house or apartment, um, wondering why God, what have I done to deserve this punishment? Um, but we are charging on ahead. Um, being together, even virtually, is is, is good. To, 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 to be together and to, to learn from God's word. Uh, so, we're, so what we're going to do over the next couple of Wednesdays, if, 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 you're, if you've read Ryan's email or, or heard anything, over the next couple of Wednesdays, we are going to be doing a series called Into the Wilderness. We are obviously in the wilderness of, uh, this is all uncharted territory for everyone involved. Um, so it, it, it's literally the wilderness of, 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 of life. Um, you know, this is this is this is ground zero. So we're we're gonna talk about how you know what do we do? Um, these Wednesdays are gonna be very practical, uh, very practical lessons about how do we get on with living as disciples. You know, whether we're um, cooped up in our house, whether we're feeling sick, just how do we get on being disciples, living kind of under lockdown, uh, not being able to, to to be together, not being able to have that much human contact. Whatever it may be, uh, we're going to talk about how do we love God, excuse me, and love one another in these situations. Um, and so, if you're if you're watching this on on YouTube or Facebook, go ahead and and, and like and subscribe and uh, share the video around it as as much as you can, as much as possible. Because even now, it's a great opportunity to to, to share God's word. Um, surely, people are are growing closer to God um, each day that um, the coronavirus uh, is on. Um, but today I thought we could um, one start off in a prayer and even even go to our our source and and look at Jesus and what he did in the wilderness. So let's let's say prayer. Uh, dear God, I, God, we're uh, I'm grateful for for technology that keeps us connected, uh, that keeps us close to one another, sort of. Uh, God, we're grateful that you you've given us this technology. Uh, God, I pray just for for our for the Cleveland Church as a whole, God, that you you keep us connected, God, you keep us safe, uh, God, keep us close to you, uh, God. I pray that you lift the fog of this virus, God, that there's a vaccine that that comes quickly, God, that the the infection rate may may go down instead of up, uh, God, that you work a miracle um, on earth, even even as you're in control of all of this, God. Uh, God, we pray that you bring about your purpose, God, that your will be done even in our lives and in the world as well, God, even in the midst of this um, calamity. Uh, God, we're grateful for you and for your son. We love you in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, I, I thought the first the, the first kind of instance of wilderness in the Bible we can look at is, 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 is going back to our Savior and our example in Jesus Christ and looking, looking at, at what he endured when he was tested in the wilderness so if you if you have a bible if you're you're on your phone on your your laptop uh go and find matthew chapter 4 i'm going to read verses 1 through 10 here it says then then jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil after fasting 40 days and 40 nights he was hungry the tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. And the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, Throw yourself down. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift up their, their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus answered him, It is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. 
All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And the devil left him, and the angels came and attended to him. Amen. Well, we see here, here Jesus is Jesus is, is, is cast out into the wilderness. He, he's, he's just been baptized. He, he's brought up from, from his baptism. And, and this is kind of the intermediate, intermediate period of, of him going into his ministry um, on earth. And, and the first thing he has to do is go into this wilderness. And he fasted 40 days and 40 nights and he was hungry. That's the understatement of, a, of the century, right? Um, but he is out in the, 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 the Israeli desert, hungry, and just there, 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 there's no precedent for that in his life. Right, he is he is literally in a new wilderness, and what happens in this new wilderness is Satan comes to tempt him. And I think for for us, we are in a completely new wilderness, right? We there is no precedent, there's there's no frame of reference for you know, there's no handbook that says what to do in case of of of, of a pa pa global pandemic. You know, no one has that handbook. So we're all kind of, you know, figuring out and patching it up as we go along. It's all new. And it's all scary. It's all new, scary, and a little bit lonely. It can be a little bit lonely at times. And what Jesus, and Jesus is going to the same thing here, and, and the devil comes to tempt him. You know, we, you know, whether you're holed up in, in your, your apartment by yourself, whether you're holed up with your family, whether, you know, you're... Whether you're somewhere else, whether you're listening overseas, somewhere in another state, Satan comes to tempt us when we're in the middle of a wilderness, when we don't know what's happening around us. And Jesus here gets three temptations, three temptations that I think we can, can glean some, um, some practicals and some practical life experiences from. So the first, the first temptation Jesus endures here in verse 4, or it's in, actually in, in verse 1, it says, Jesus, uh, verse 3 actually, where, where am I? The tempter came to him and said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. You know, Satan goes right for the jugular with Jesus. He's like, if you are who you say you are, tell these stones to become bread. If you got the power, then make it happen. You know, if you're if you're really who you say you are, if you have the power to make it happen, Satan is, is calling on Jesus to to, to 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 rely totally on himself. And he's saying, if you if you can do what you say you can do, if 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 the word is right about you, then make it happen. You know, Satan is asking Jesus to to forgo his his fast and his dependence on God. Right, he's fasting for forty days. He's he's asking him, forego all that dependence on God and just make the bread yourself. Right, you know we're in a time of 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 of, of great confusion and 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 and, and um, just confusion. Right, we're in a time of confusion and 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 what can happen in, in times of confusion and, and panic is is we can go into self reliance mode. Right, some of us might be a little bit more. Um, prepared than others you know some of us might have you know i don't know if, if there's someone out there with a, a doomsday bunker that's been you know stashing up for this day right um but some of us have more ability to to to, to do than others um and we can get we can easily get into a mode that says i'm gonna i'm gonna do everything i can i'm i why, why instead of praying and instead of um, fasting before God, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the, I'm gonna go out to the store and and, and buy all the toilet paper and the hand soap, um, you know, in, 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 instead of reading my Bible here, I'm, I'm gonna call everyone that I, I can, and and and, and calling people and, and and going to the store and, and and getting stocked up on supplies, that that that's all good and well, but what Satan was tempting Jesus with here is he was tempting him to forego his reliance on God so he could do it himself, right. What Satan is going to tempt us with is to forgo our reliance on God so we get caught up in, all right, what, what, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? Right? He's going he's gonna to tempt us to say, you know, you don't have to pray this morning as long as you're, 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 you're stocked up 
on your your hand sanitizer. You don't need to have a have a quiet time. Why have a quiet time? That's just kind of pass. That's that's passive um, involvement. Prayer is a passive involvement. You can depend on yourself in this moment. And Satan is going to come to us, you know, whether in, in in whatever way that may be. Satan is going to tempt us to lay aside our dependence on God. He's going to tempt us with he's going to tempt us and say you don't need you don't need prayer you don't need the body around you you don't need to 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 to, to call Christians around you you don't need to 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 be in your Bible because you can you can handle this on your own you got ways there's a million and one articles about how to survive the pandemic you can that can be your quiet time you know. But Satan is going to get to each and every one of us and tell us that that God, that we can do this on our own, and God, we don't need to depend on God this time. We are self sufficient. When the reality is, 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 is Jesus knew that He needed to rely on God. You know, we're going to get to to, to Jesus' answers here at the you know what he how he answered Satan at the at the end here and and, and kind of our practicals. Um, but even Jesus knew. That above all else, he needed to rely on God. He needed to rely on Scripture. He needed to rely on prayer above all else. You know, the second temptation is 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 um I think a, a doozy for 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 I don't know if it was a doozy for Jesus, but it could be a doozy for us. And in, in, in verse five, it says, "Then the devil took him to the holy city, and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down." For it is written, He will command His angels concerning you, and they will lift up, they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. You know, G, um, you know, Satan is, as as you know, he's got strike one. Jesus, you know, Jesus is not falling for, for for temptation number one, and he he comes back to 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 Jesus and and he says, Hey, go and throw yourself off. Go make you know, go make a spectacle of yourself. And God's going to save you. And what does he do? Is He, he brings out scripture. He brings out scripture to, to, Satan brings out scripture to back up his point. Satan intentionally distorts scripture to fulfill his own needs. Or to fulfill his, 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 his you know, his mission of tempting Jesus. And then the, the the second here the, the second temptation is is even for for Jesus is is, is not given into the distortion of Scripture, right? And I think that the temptation for us is 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 the same is not giving in to distortion of Scripture. You know we, you know there is a cottage industry of of of, of folks and and preachers and doomsday sayers that. Would predict the end of the world, you know, from from the book of Daniel, from the book of Revelation, and say, hey, the, the the beast is is this and that, and the dragon is is where the dragon, and who knows what's going on, right? Um, you know, there, there's there's all these people that that would say, hey, this is the scriptures say this is the end of the world, right? And what and and they become all the more louder, and I think. To certain people, all the more credible in times of panic like this. And what we have to do as disciples, what we have to do as people that, that want to, to live like Christians, is we have to hold to what Jesus says that no one knows the time and the hour. We have to, we have to um, resist the temptation to believe distortion of Scripture. People that say, "Man, this is this was." predestined in, in in Genesis 1 and, and 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 yada 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 we can't go down those rabbit holes we can't go down those rabbit holes because they those rabbit holes are not useful for our lives as disciples you know we can't we can't get into to a a, a pattern of saying we can't get into a, a pattern thinking oh man is 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 this is is where it was well, that guy that I watched on YouTube, you know, at, at, at 2 a.m., was he right about these scriptures? You know, we, we can't we can't get into, into patterns of, of of reading scriptures that 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 insulate ourselves as well. We can't distort scriptures in our own minds that 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 insulate ourselves 
from the outside world, from, from disciples, from our families. We have to hold fast to what we've learned. We have to hold fast and not be swayed by the, by the shifting wind, by the literal, you know, times. We have to hold fast to, 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 the, to the, the truth that we learned in the beginning and not give in to distortions of Scripture. To, to folks that would say this, that, and the, this is what this Scripture means because, you know, the pandemic is here and, and now the dragon's coming up and, and, and you don't have to live like a disciple. You know, you don't have to, to, to call your brother and sister anymore. We have to resist those dis those temptations. We have to resist those distortions. We have to resist those temptations. You know, the last temptation here Jesus faces is as in verse 8. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. You know, Satan has, has, has gone over two now, and, and the last temptation is the biggest one. Satan is, is, is telling Jesus, hey, I will give you everything if you just bow down and worship me. If you abandon the God that you, you've known from birth, that, that, that is literally your father, if you abandon him in favor of me, you will have everything you need. You know, the temptation for us here, the temptation that Satan will come to us is, is, is exactly the same as abandoning God and giving in to, 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 to the world's wisdom. It's abandoning you know, God's wisdom in favor of what the world has to say. You know, abandoning God's word in favor of, of what the New York Times is printing, in, in favor of, of, of whatever, you know, Fox News scene, what, whatever news outlet you can think of. And I'm going to abandon God's wisdom and God's word and, and, and what God says of our lives in favor of, of whoever and whatever the, the world says. You know, we are... You know, there is, you know, like I said in the beginning, there, there's a different article about how to survive the pandemic, you know, how to stock up, how to, you know, every which way, everyone has advice. Your, 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 your crazy uncle or aunt probably has some advice for you, right? I, I've, I've gotten some, some strange advice in the past couple of days as well it's, that made me scratch my head like that didn't make any sense. But the longer that we stay in the wilderness... The longer that, that, that we're here under a, a cloud of, of, of pandemic and, and, and panic and confusion, the more tempting it is for us to say, man, God's word is, is not built for a time like this. How can I use scripture when, when the, the grocery store lines are empty? Or how, you know, these scriptures, they, they, they don't really apply to times like this. We can abandon God's wisdom to, 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 to take on the wisdom of the world. And thinking, all right, what, what, what this article I've read, that's, that's how I'm going to get through this. This article I read online or this, this advice that I got from my, from my family or friends, this is how I'm going to get this. And I don't need God's word anymore. I don't need to stay close in God's word anymore. Why? Because it, it's, it's just not helpful for me. It's just not helpful for, for a time such as this. What am I going to do with this? You know, Satan comes, the, the longer we stay in, and, and we're only, we're only, you know, it's, it's um, if you're watching this, um, it's only Wednesday. So we're about three, four days into kind of the, the, the new reality, right? Like the new reality kind of setting over the weekend, and we're only four days in. Um, here Jesus was 40 days in. He was 40 days in. You know, the longer we stay, the more enticing these temptations are going to be. The more enticing it is to abandon God's wisdom in favor of the world's. The more enticing, it's going to be more enticing to, to believe the distortions of Scripture. They cause fear and, and, and less unnecessary panic. The longer we stay under this cloud, it's going to be more enticing 
to depend solely on ourselves and to drift far away from God. You know, that the, the, the great thing about, about this, these, these temptations here with Jesus is Jesus gives us the model. He gives us the model of what to do. And in every situation, he uses scripture. In every situation, he uses scripture. Even, in, even when Satan tries to distort the scripture, he says, look, he comes back at him with scripture that overcomes that distortion. You know, Jesus knew where to gather his strength. He knew where his strength had to come from, and it was God and his wisdom. You know, in verse in verse 4, is very apt for, for us, even in this time and even going forward. Jesus answered him in verse 4, It is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. You know, we are we are four days into to however long this is gonna be, and and and, and prayerfully it is it is short. You know, we're prayerfully we'll we'll be back together soon. But what is what is the practical to take away from this? It is to know that Man doesn't live on bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. That our strength comes from Scripture. That we, even in this time, have to stay, we have to, to, to draw closer to God's word. You know, each of us has a has a has temptations that are specific to us that, that Satan knows that, that that push our buttons, right? And, and um, you know, whether that's whether that's worry and anxiety, whether that's um, whether that's impurity, whether that's prideful, pridefulness, you know, these things are going to get amplified, you know, under our, under our current situations, whether it's hunkered down or going to work in, in sparse conditions. Um, and so, so I have a list of, of scriptures that address each one of these, that address these temptations that we talked about today and the temptations unique to your own life and have scriptures and memorize those scriptures. We, you know, some of us have a lot of time to, Take time to, to memorize those scriptures, to hide them in your heart so that you will not sin against God. Um, we are, we're going to do this every, every Wednesday, kind of looking at, okay, how do we live as disciples in the wilderness? And the, and the first lesson of, of living as disciples in the wilderness is hold fast to God's word. Hide God's word in your heart. Hide it in your heart, in your mind. Put it on your doorpost. Talk about it when you sit down and when you wake up. Hold fast to God's word. If we hold fast to God's word, it will be true. In, it will be true of us as it is in verse 11. And the devil left him, Jesus, and the angels came and attended to him. If we hold fast to God's word, I'm sure that God will attend to each one of us. That God will personally attend to each one of us. So I'll see you back here next Wednesday. Stay, stay safe. We love you.